Hi everybody, you're welcome to the next edition of the GA Museum Book Club. Uh, and this month I'm delighted to be joined by one of our youngest authors yet. It's um, Sean O'Sullivan and his book, it's a little bit different from one we've had before. It's more of an advice Bible, I guess, uh, the player's advice. So I have it here. I hope you've all enjoyed it. And um, so we're going to have a quick chat with Sean and I'm going to put some questions about the book to him. Um, and I hope you all enjoy the chat on this very unique book. So you're very welcome, Sean. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Um, I suppose for, there's a lot to talk about in this. It's kind of more of a, a project in a way than I suppose how and how you go about writing some books. And um, so if you want to tell us a little bit maybe about yourself and how the book came about in the first place. And yeah, so as I said, I'm Sean Sullivan. Uh, I play football. I play junior football with my own club, Nafina, and then I coach the under 14 boys as well. Uh, the way the book came about is uh, in a physics class three weeks before my leave and search, I basically just taught when the leave and search over, what am I going to do for the summer? So it started off as a summer project and then took me two years to actually yeah. finish. Uh, yeah, so basically just in the physics class, I was writing down. You know, I started off just real, writing a list of names by province. So like just sort of a almost a wish list of inter-county players at the time, like uh, male and female. And then, yeah, it just sort of grew from there. Uh, first thing I did was uh, to actually uh, start, I was contact the charity, so Self Help Africa, all the royalties are going to them. Yeah, uh, why did you choose them? Just sort of their connection with the GAA, you know, I thought it was a real gad charity, like with Alan Kearns, the yeah. head of it. And, yeah, so I decided to go to him. Uh, he said, yeah, go ahead with it. Uh, so basically then I could, it sort of helped to recruit in players because, you know, it was for a good cause. Yeah. Uh, and the then, idea was that you'd ask all of these kind of stars um, for advice for, I suppose, for kids really and for and people who yeah. were coaching kids, was it? Yeah, sort of for, so I was with the under 15s at the time, so now I'm back with the 14s, but those lads are now under 16. So when I was with them, basically the idea was like a book for that, that sort of age group. So, you know, yeah. 12 to minor maybe. But I think it works for any players now. Uh, yes, yeah, so basically those two age groups. Um, yeah. And did you have a kind of something you wanted out of it? Were you looking back to your own childhood or things you would have liked to have known, something like that? Yeah, exactly. So basically, uh, book I would have liked to read on us, you know, and then the other side of it was if it's just something different. I mean, I don't think there's any book there out there like it, like at least for, yeah, anyway, you know. Yeah, no, a, definitely. A handful of soccer ones, I think, James Miller and Marcus Rashford, they're two books are sort of similar, but maybe even for younger kids. Uh -huh. And what age group would you say this book is aged, aimed at? Um... Originally, sort of 12 to 18, so secondary students. Uh, but then I've had people come up in the club to me since, you know, players in their 40s telling me how they got something out of it. So I think That's any brilliant. player or coach, really, yeah. <laughs> and I suppose while some of the advice is of its time, I guess, to do with nutrition and, you know, lifestyle, yeah. a lot of it is timeless as well. So you'd hope, you know, that there's a longevity in the book. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, just practice makes perfect is the sort of ta another tagline you could use for it if you want yeah. to. <laughs> and I suppose why did you bother doing it like there's a lot of people that have finished their leave and search and the last thing they would want to do is go into their a project like that again yeah. maybe lockdown helped I guess that you were yeah involved. lockdown definitely uh more for recruitment so all the players were at home so true you know when I got in contact with them like they were keen to jump on board because, you know, they'd have something else to do. <laughs> yeah, uh, and did you have a set list of questions that you sent out? Yeah, or sort of, I sent out headings and then the players sort of picked out what they felt were uh, for them. So it was like gym, nutrition, skills, um, mindset, preparation. And yeah, I think that was the sort of headings and then uh, the handful of interviews I did, I 
sort of had my own questions depending on the player. Like, so for oh yeah, some players they're they're involved in coaching themselves. So I asked, I think anyone that was involved in coaching at the time of writing, basically just what are county panels looking for? Yeah. And were you surprised by some of the answers? Uh, I was surprised by the mix. So some players, you know, they say uh, to stick with, you know, just one code, one sport, and just, you know, try your best to get as good as that as you can. Uh, then there's other players. I think the best example of multi-sports in the book is probably Sarah Rowe, you know, underage soccer, AFL, yeah, now footballer. Yeah, so she says, you know, do everything you can. Interesting. Um, and did you find there was a difference between the advice from hurlers and footballers? Um, I don't think so, no. Maybe in terms of if you went very particular in it, you know, puck is replaced instead of kick, like, but otherwise, no, I think it's all, you know, you'll pick something up from either code. <laughs> and is, I suppose a lot of the advice is repeat, repeat, repeat. Yeah. Um, what about lifestyle nutrition? What kind of things came through in that? Yeah, so uh, one of the things that came up was sort of your uh, peer group almost, you know, about how you're the average of the five people you hang around most with. So, you know, you want to be with people that will sort of support your aims and, you know. That's interesting. Help you achieve, yeah. And then, so I always do the thing, preparation, sorry, lifestyle and preparation, wasn't it? Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So then the preparation sort of got some of the players just to talk through there, you know. I think it was the, yeah, the weekend of a match, so what they did Friday evening to, you know, show in basically. Right. Um, and was there anything unusual? What was the most unusual piece of advice? Um, so Eddie Brennan told us, or he has a trampoline out the back, so he used to do a few rounds on that before <laughs> heading to wow. game. Yeah. I actually missed that. I don't think I must have, I don't know how I missed that in the book. Wow, because I've read it. Oh, uh, well, that's brilliant. Yeah. And that the other was thing, yeah. The other interesting thing is how, like, he'd be at Electric Picnic the week before, you know, all Ireland finals. Obviously, yeah. Because he's a guard, but, you know, <laughs> he's just sort of like, get away from it all, yeah. And did you have an age kind of group uh, in mind for the players? Or is it past players as well? Or were you focused yeah, more on players? Sort of that was, so I was 21 at the weekend. So basically it was just oh, sort of from, yeah, thanks. <laughs> so it was basically uh, players from my lifetime, I suppose I could say. So right. I think the earliest retirement is Mark Bowley from Limerick in 2007. Okay. Uh, then after that, it's Oshin McConville. Like they're all sort of, you know, Suppose noughties and two thousands would be the two. Yeah. Nine years. Yeah. And um, apologies if there's a noise. Everyone in the background. I'm just here in the museum, so there's a group in. But I'm I'm hoping you can hear hear me okay. So we'll go back to the fact that you're just twenty one. And I know when um I heard about the book and the uh, people in O'Brien were saying that you were one of the youngest authors that they've ever published. So you must be really proud of that. Yeah, it was good. Yeah, I was hoping. Uh, so I sent it to them in December 20, December 2020, I would have sent it to them. Uh, and you gone to them beforehand while you were writing it or did you no, send so it? I sent, I sent a complete book. They wow. said, but yeah, they told me that apparently a lot of the sort of first time writers send in full drafts like, so yeah. I sent it in to them with the hope of possibly having it published before my 20th birthday in March, but obviously that's, you know, far too short yeah, a window of for a book. Yeah. You know, even they were great in terms of like, uh, just sort of the balance they suggested, you know, of counties or whatever, you know, basically getting a more diverse spread. So I have 28 counties in it. Uh, I great. tried to. So, they, so they, they made some suggestions to your draft yeah. and then you went back again. Yeah. And what was the process like, I suppose, of working with them? Did they give, because I presume it was all new to you, did they give you an editor? Yeah, yeah, uh, Helen Carr was my editor, so she's done, a, what is she, I think she's done a good few of the sports file books. And right. Yeah, she's done a good few sports books for O'Grimes anyway, I know that. 
And did you have input in choosing the cover, choosing the text, anything, the fonts, anything like that? Um, the text was all mine. The fonts, not really, they have the standard one, but I agreed to it all anyway. And then uh, the cover, interestingly, it wasn't my first choice at the time, but uh, Emma Byrne did the cover. She sent me three covers. Uh, originally, it was my second one. Oh. There. Yeah. But uh, I prefer it now to what I had originally. I like the tunnel. The way, you know, the idea is that the players get to run through there. The readers yeah. get to run through there themselves one day. And funny, um, on our, our tour in the museum here, that yeah. was one of the highlights of the tour is coming out that tunnel because yeah. you get to do that. So was it really exciting seeing the cover coming through? Oh, yeah, definitely. Like the, uh, just seeing my name at the top, basically. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's an amazing achievement and when you had the idea first so you were just finished your leave insert and what was the who was the first player you approached and how did that come about um first player um now i sent like i sent a load out at once like so i think so did you email people or ring them yeah uh it was all email instagram uh i joined linkedin at right. the time purely for trying to contact these county players so uh yeah sorry so uh texted them all the first one the first handful to come on board was paul kerrigan uh owen murphy um also i think breed stack came on board earlier yeah breed stack was on board early too because and you probably found it easier to get people as you went along because you could yeah. say other people had done it yeah yeah, exactly. Um, well, yeah, and then once lockdown hit, you know, there was a massive uptake of it as well. Yeah, so it was great timing for you. Yeah. But you uh, had all this going on, and then you obviously, did you start college then as well? Yeah, started college September after, so I'm doing education and training, so uh, it worked out well in terms of college. I'm, I was only in, I think the most or the most days a week I've ever been in were three days. So, you know, I had time off to work on the book, I suppose. <laughs> wow, well, fair play to you. It's an amazing achievement and probably one of the most successful lockdown stories I, yeah. <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> so, um, and was there anyone when you were, I suppose, contacting, who was your wish list or have you any personal heroes that are in the book? Uh, yes, yeah, so a good few. Funnily enough, I met them on the Legends tours and the museum yourself. Yeah, which so, was, uh, you were saying that before, so that's yeah. uh, very clever. So you had very uh, interesting ways of finding people. So you basically yeah. came on the Legends tours. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I sort of half pitched it on the tour, and obviously they're, you know, doing their own thing during that. So I gave them all letters as well. Wow. Uh, so, yeah, Tommy, from that I got Tommy Walsh, Kieran Donaghy. Uh, well, so I'm just trying to think now from the actual. Uh, some I had, like already on board, or I, I texted them asking them to do the book, and I mentioned that I was on their legend store. Like so, Aidan O'Mahony, uh, Graham Garrity. Wow. Um, I'm just trying. Sorry. Just give a check behind me. You're okay. It's only, I suppose, to give us yeah. an idea of, of yeah. the process. So I'm just uh, calling my hero wall. So basically, it's uh, basically all the gaff people I've met on the different legend stores or other. Oh, so wow. On that now. I don't have any more on that or other, I should say. <laughs> wow. Um, I'll see it like it's, I suppose, it's a pa when you can see, obviously, the room and the, the photos, it's obviously a passion project as well. So have you any oh. other ideas or do you think you'll write another book? Uh, yeah, maybe I've a few ideas that I need to, I, was, I need to go back to O'Brien's and basically see if they think there's an interest in any of them. Yeah. Uh, when I like their series, the greatest sports stars series, so I might be one of them. I just need to basically think of a, pick, well not think of, pick a player that I'd like to write on, write about. And on the writing side of it then, um, like were you confident with your own writing or did it develop throughout the, the process? Uh, yeah, I suppose it was, it would have been different to any essay writing I'd have done in school or even 
college because it's different to academic. I suppose it was just something, you know, getting to write about something I'm actually interested in was a, <laughs> a big change, but nice. Yeah. Um, and were you confident in your own writing? Like, it's a big undertaking to write a book, you yeah. know? Yeah, I mean, I suppose the, a good few of the players wrote their own pieces, like, and I just sort of half edited them, and then I, that, yeah. Yeah, and then I ghost wrote the uh, phone calls. So yeah. I like, guess it's probably maybe six or seven of the pieces I sort of wrote, and then everything else is just sort of half edited by me. I was wondering, yeah, it's an interesting process, and I suppose you must have folders and folders of research now, do you? Oh, uh, yeah, well, just in terms of a... Uh, a load of Excel sheets, like play, of just the breakdown of players by, you know, by county, by province, by code, you know, yeah. everything just to see that there was, you know, enough of a balance. And I'm, I'm interested, I suppose it open, it goes by position. And I'm interested in the difference between maybe a, a forward and a goalkeeper. Was there, was there differences or was, was a goalkeeper unusual compared to the rest of the team? Or did you find anything like that? Um, some of the goalkeepers, interestingly, they said that they were the last person to talk to about uh, nutrition or gym. <laughs> Funnily really? enough, uh, yeah, they felt. I don't know why, but that's what they felt. Uh, I think the one thing about the book Green Shoot, you could tell that I'm a football half forward, just based off the. I sort of went a bit overboard in terms of like looking after my own position. I think I maybe 40 forwards compared to, you know, 30 backs. Isn't that interesting? But that's just a natural thing, yeah. I suppose, because you're I think, interested in that. Yeah, but even that's where the big names are, I suppose you could say, you know, you want to, people want to hear from the forwards or, you know, yeah. they want to get their picture taken with the, you know, the likes of Clifford and these guys. Yeah. Yeah, so it must be, yeah, it must be an amazing feeling putting it all together. And have you had feedback from any underage teams or anyone you coach or anything like that? Uh, yeah, mix. Uh, a good few of the ones I coach just sort of slag me over it, uh, <laughs> looking for free copies or whatever. But now a good few, yeah, players have come up. Uh, Brilliant. I did, a, I did a signing just down in the nursery. Uh, maybe two weeks after the book came out. So that was good and yeah, good feedback there as well. Oh, absolutely. And do you want to tell us maybe before we finish up, because I'm conscious it's coming up to the half hour now, oh, do you want oh. to tell us a little bit maybe more about the work of, of the charity that it's all in aid of? Uh, yeah, sure. So their, their main thing is sort of education around farming in Africa. Mm -hmm. sort of trying to make themselves so, trying to make them like self sustainable and you know so they can keep uh, growing basically and this is the charity that was founded by the Galway GA yeah. star yeah, like current, yeah. Real player. But even for him to come on board so uh, early he must have obviously yeah. trusted in you and in the project because you know it's it's a big yeah. thing for a charity to put their name to the book yeah yeah, so like one of the things I had in my head was basically, so get the charity on board was the first thing, and then tell as many people as I could <laughs> I'm trying to write a book. So yeah. then basically there was no turning back at that point. The charity you had to do with it. Up, and everyone knows about it, so. <laughs> You've committed <laughs> to it. Come out, yeah, if it doesn't come out, it looks bad. <laughs> yeah, well, it's a good way of doing it. It puts pressure on you to do yeah. it. And did you find at any point, oh, my God, I'm not going to get this done? Uh... I don't think it ever felt like it was definitely felt as if this is going to take a good bit longer than I had hoped like which is what I think every single author that we've yeah. spoken to in the book club says it is not an easy task no no definitely not but uh enjoyable all the same and then uh, even to get the uh Marty and Mick on Marty Marcy and Mick behind yeah. the doors, like that was great as well you know yeah, and I was reading your own author's note at the end. You're obviously oh, yeah. thrilled that Marty could could do do the um, forward. How did that come about? Oh, uh, I got a contact firm from uh, one of your own in the museum, Tom Ryan. So uh, I just got in contact. I emailed him and basically said, "Will you have a look at it?" And yeah, he read through it and thought, "Yeah, you would do it," which is great because you. Uh, he did it, you know, but my his book came out 
a month after mine, like That's so the right. fact that he's, you know, yeah, even thought about putting his name to you know on his up yeah. so soon after is great. Like, yeah, brilliant. And I suppose if you could take any piece of advice, then I know you have you have said I suppose listen to your coaches and and work on your weaknesses. Um, is it, is there one kind of overriding theme or piece of advice that comes across that um, if, if to someone who hasn't read the book, what would you tell them? Yeah, well, just my favourite quote from the book, or one of my favourites, is a uh, Shane McGrath from Tipperary Hurler, the former uh, phrase of the. Oh yeah, the the more I practice, the luckier I get. Right. Which is basically, you know, the more you practice, the more your touch is in, and you know, you're under great balls, or you know. It all comes easier look. to you, basically, yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think it was great, you know, it's pretty much even with female, male. Is it? Does it work out even? Um, unfortunately, no. There's a slight misbalance, but uh, I tried to recruit think, evenly, but yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. No, it's pretty it's good, like, because for yeah. GA... I think it might be, you know? might be 70 30, but, okay. you know, still... Yeah, it's, it felt like it, it, you know, there was a lot for young girls to, to read too, yeah. which is brilliant and unusual and definitely kind of a step in a, a, a right direction. So I think a lot of people will appreciate that and coaches. Um, and interestingly, we've had it on sale in the, the uh, museum gift shop now and there's been great interest from coaches in particular. So oh, good. you're definitely on to something. <laughs> um, and I'm like, it's amazing to send your first book into O'Brien and for them to accept it. It's very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so congratulations. Quick as well. Thanks. Um, so I think that's it. Is there anything else we've missed out on or anything you'd like to mention about the book that we haven't covered? Um, I don't think so. No, I think we've got through everything. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I think it was a kind of a different book than we'd normally have. You know, it was more interesting to chat about the process and, you know, the idea and the fact that you bothered to do this. It's an amazing achievement. So well done. And we hope to talk to you again soon when your next book comes out. Um, and I will be in touch with everyone in the book club this week with our latest choice. Thank you very much, everyone. And goodbye. Thanks, Sean. Thanks, Amel.